I can I can concentrate on it. I think left last time we left off with where you had well you told us later on your story of how you became a Christian and meeting art. Art Mata downstairs. Yeah. And you told us uh, of art stopping in the middle of the street and saying Would you like to marry me? Yeah. yeah and I think that's where we left off. So okay. the story so from there like your courtship with art and your marriage to him and yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't think I, I told. I told you that when he was asking me to marry him, because I was very uh, spoiled when I was young, mm -hmm. and I would never eat margarine. If the people have a margarine on their bread, then I wouldn't eat it. <laughs> that was so, a sign of wealth. Yeah. yeah. So when he asked me to marry him, he said, uh, "I will never be rich." but you will always have sweet butter. <laughs> and he stopped the whole traffic that was around us, all those people who were going to see the fireworks on the, on the, on the riverside. And so we had a whole bunch of people who said, what is this guy doing? And then we say, why do you have to ask me that? I know that I want to marry you. And it, I thought that, that, that was unnecessary. So, and then all those people were standing still and they all started applauding. And then we kissed, and then we walked on in the parade, and we went to the to the parade to uh, to see it all. So, and then uh, he was in the service, and then under the river there was a tunnel. It was a, a little bit more than a mile long, the tunnel. And during the war time, that was closed because there was no electricity and there was no nothing. So, but then it was open at that time, and then we were living on the other side of the ocean of the river. And art had to be in the service that was by the, the, the through the tunnel, and then and in the big park what was there there was the marines where where they were settled and where he was serving, and he had to be inside at eleven o'clock at night, and then uh, he would be maybe eleven thirty he would be still on that side and he had to go to the tunnel and he was wearing those big new shoes. And that was not so comfortable for him, and he was running, running, running to be on time at 11, 12 o'clock, he had to be in. And then he did it for a few weeks, and then he discovered that when you were living in Rotterdam, and you were from Rotterdam, you didn't have to come in at night. <laughs> so that made it a big difference, because then he could stay in our house, and he slept on a, on a bed in the corner, but he could make the nights a little bit longer. And, Especially because there was dancing on the radio from 11 till 12, and that came from England, and that was the most beautiful dancing music, and that was Vera Lynn who was singing, and uh, that was always at 12 o'clock was the last dance. And then my mother always had the curtains open, wide open, and we had a downstairs uh, uh, home, and the people were stopping on the outside to see us dancing. So um, it was a wonderful time. And then we, we had a chance to exchange that house because you couldn't get houses. Everything was bombed. There wasn't no people. They were living in chicken coops and it was horrible. And in the, the, the cash, what is it? The, the glass houses where you had where they were uh, having the vegetables growing. Green people houses. were living in yeah. there too. Yeah. And then if you wanted to get married and you had to get a house, it was almost impossible. So then there was an ad in the paper that we could exchange our house, what was on the Plymouth, with a bigger house, what was on the other side of the, the ri ri river, and that's what we did. But then my mother had downstairs, she had two, three rooms and a kitchen, and then upstairs, two, two stairs goes up, there was uh, a, a big room, well, maybe as big as the den, and a little, and a big closet and a bathroom, and a very small room where we had a, could put a bed in. And by that time it was 1947. And then uh, I always had something that I wanted to... Well, we, we, we were breaking out the closets because then we could put a table in there. Uh, we could put a bed in, the, in that one room, but, but nothing else. So there was something what, that we needed more. And then we went to an, uh, we went to an, uh, uh, where they're selling the furniture and 
big hall of an all kinds of because I wanted to have a copper crown, uh, 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 light for, for okay. the lights, something, yeah. something like this. And then we went down there, and then when we came down there, there was a, on the hall, in, the, in the hall was a big closet for standing there, and there was a, two night tables with it, and a little table. And that was for sale for 150 dollars, 450 guldens, and also the copper crown that was also 100 dollars. But was a lot of money for, sure. for us because he didn't make that much money. I didn't work because I stayed with my mother. And no, no, I was working in a, in a head shop, and it was 10 dollars, 10 guilders a week. <laughs> a, a, a head shop, what's that? Yeah, making hats. Oh, a head yeah. shop. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and then at the same time, on Saturdays, I had to model the heads downstairs. So, and then I got ten dollars extra for that. So, and so, by all by all together, by so we had about two hundred, three hundred dollars to spend on something what we wanted to get. So we bought the big closet, what is still now in yeah. my house, uh -huh. the copper crown, what is hanging in Fiennes' kitchen, and uh, that was somehow the beginning of it. And we we. There was some kind of a paint that you could put on carpeting, and that was black, and we took that in black, and so all together we, we, we got slowly we got a home together, and then it was 1948 August the 20, 28th, and that was the wedding day. So I went to my father always on Fridays to get the money for my mother, and I told him I said, well we are going to be married on the August the 28th. And uh, do you think you can come? And he said, no, I, ca I cannot do that because I will see your mother and she will be upset and you will get a lot of, it uh, will be no good. I cannot do that. So I told my mother, I said, well, uh, daddy is not coming because uh, it doesn't work out. He said, yes, well, if your father is not coming, I'm not coming either. What? Yeah. And then we had, uh, and we were planning to have a wedding in the in the city hall. Uh, we were not to church going yet. And uh, then we said, okay, if we marry at nine o'clock in the morning, we will uh, just do that at the city hall, and then we don't need anybody. Let let nobody come. We only had the two witnesses with us. And, uh, Who were your and I and I had a white white material. I wanted to have a white dress, and I was still dreaming a little bit. I said, "Well, okay, no white dress, nothing. We go to the city hall." And uh, then we had a taxi in the morning. Oh, and then I, and then I got a secondhand dress in a secondhand store, and from that dress I bought some material because it was the new look. It was a halfway white, and then with some pleats on the back, and it was. At that time, very from America was the fashion, and I could copy it, and I made that outfit. So, um, and it is on on the wedding picture. You can see it also that we are walking, and that I was, was wearing it. Um, but when we were, came, were coming in, then we took the, a taxi to pick up his mother. She says, "I want to be there. I will be in the back." And with Jan, Jantje, and Kareltje, they were still little boys. And then Johnny was there. And my cousin me, where I met Carl, uh, with, with Carl, who was a witness, and Wim was a witness that was also the mm -hmm. stepchildren from mm -hmm. Father Lindemans. We went through that whole Lindemans deal. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, they were standing in the back, and we were sitting in the front, with maybe 40 couples all together, and then some family members, they were in the back. But they all have family members who were closer to them, sitting there. We didn't have anybody. So and then you, they were going to the to the line, and they were calling your name, and then you said yes, yes. But we, I said, well, let's have our rings. Let's make something out of it. Then we're going to say yes. I put my earring on my hand, and then we will do that and change and kiss each other. Please, let's have something new. So, so we did. What got the attention from the people who didn't do it? But then there was nobody behind us who was saying, and then there was this, a voice coming from the back, and it was in that real rather than kind of a uh, melody, and she says, oh dear Lord, those are orphans? 
<laughs> and that is how we got married. <laughs> so your your witnesses were My Carl and Carl, and, Carl and Wim, and they signed before before they had to sign. Uh -huh. That that was okay, but it was a, 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 a yeah, not the wedding, but what you were dreaming about. So, but it was. You were there I don't with think forty it, other it, couples. Huh? Forty other couples. Four, uh, forty other couples who were saying yes, 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 yes. yes. Very. It had to be done by the law, something yeah. like that. So, and then we said, well, last one day we will have a, we will have a different wedding. Uh, and we will be married in the church. So, uh, but, but then I don't think it is how you marry. It is what your marriage is, what you yeah. make out of it. That is the most important thing in life. And we loved each other so much and respected each other that I think it was okay. It was very well. And then in the afternoon, <laughs> yeah, well, maybe that will be nice too. We had some kind of a reception. Um, I had uh, the, the cheapest way that you <laughs> can buy liverwurst and uh, another kind of wurst, some kind of a salami. And I think we had 30 little rolls, we had uh, 24 bottles of beer, we had two bottles of wine. And then we were broke, we couldn't do any more. So we were hoping not more pimp people would be coming. So, but um, that was was a nice night. But then we, 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 I said, well, let's make it a U table that we have that, and then the people can sit around it. So we took two doors, what was in the other room, out, and we made a table out of that. So one door here, one door here, and here was a table, and we had to fit boxes under there, and then we took the white tablecloth, the white. Uh, bed linens under the tables, so we, we made a big white new table and I put some flowers on it, decorated it, and it was nice. But then my mother, when we came out of the church, the, 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 the witnesses were sitting there, and they were all there, because we had to wait a little bit to, to get our picture taken. And that was the picture that I was talking about, you were not supposed to smile. Yeah. So that's why we are uh. sitting kind of like that on the, on the, on the picture. And we came home maybe an hour later than that we were married. So and they were sitting and waiting for us to come home. But my mother was very unhappy that I got married today because she uh, could not share in in our happiness. So it was a sour thing when we came home. There was nobody who said congratulations. There was nobody who was take, saying uh, sing for for the couple. It was very dull. Hmm. But then in the afternoon it was very hot and we were living close where the river is. And then I said, I said, why don't we go swimming in the river? And somehow we got bathing suits together for all the young people who were there. And me went very quickly home. It was close by. And she came home with a whole armor of baby bathing suits and towels. So we all went swimming in the river. And what well, doesn't go with the wedding at all. But <laughs> it was for us. Fine, it was cool because 28th of July is not a day that it is cool weather. So, and then we got a lot of flowers. We got, and we I put them in the, in the bathtub on where we were living. We had a bathtub, but we didn't have warm water or any shower or anything. But that was not in the house. So I filled the tub with uh, with uh, water and put the flowers in there. And that was, uh, and then when the, and the whole party was over, oh yeah, that was another thing. We we bought a, a floor carpet and, and a, a, rug. a rug. We bought a rug uh, maybe a week before that we got married. And then then we rolled that flo that that rug out, and I walked over it, and I was very uh, allergic to for fleas or for something. And then I walked over the carpet, my whole feet, they were filled with fleas. Oh, no. And I said, what are we doing now? And then we, we got a p pail of water, and I uh, put car car some kind of a disinfected things in there, in that water. And then I walked over the carpeting, and then the fleas were on my feet. I was stripping them off, <laughs> and that's how we got the fleas out of the carpet. <laughs> Every time we walked over it. And then, and then when we when we were coming upstairs, I walked over it again, and it was then supposed to be the honeymoon. <laughs> so, 
And I said, why don't we go sit in the top with all the flowers? We can do that now. So we were sitting in the top with the flowers. And uh, then I went over the carpeting again and got more fleas off in, in the water, got clean water in it. And then we took that with us to the bed. So that we wouldn't have any fleas coming into our bed. Because in that time, it was 1948, after the war, that was not a pleasant time. It was uh, just trying out to come back to normal in life. But it didn't bother us at all. It was just fine. And then we had about, uh, oh, what was it? $85 we had left over from the wedding and the thing and to start our new life. <laughs> and then we said in the morning, he says, well, now, uh, what, what are we going to do now? Are we going to spend that money? Are we going to... Uh, but because I'm just reading in the newspaper, we can buy an, an, a box of puppy for $65. A box of what? A boxer pup. Uh, we, oh. were, we were crazy about boxer dogs. And uh, he says, so we can go and do spend it today, or we can buy a little boxer. So let's buy a little boxer. So for our honeymoon, we bought a little boxer. <laughs> And, we, and, it, and it was one with papers, was supposed to be an expense of $65 for a dog. So, and then he called him, he, his name was Caesar, and he was with the papers. And it was a beautiful little dog, it was so amazing. It was for the first time that we had something to, to take care of in our little house. And it was so cozy, and it was so and nice. Second story, above your second story above your mother. Well, my mother, uh, after my father left, was very hurt. Uh, she thought that I would be getting married to a very rich man. Hmm. And then I came with a man who was just as poor as we were. <laughs> but we were so happy with it, with each other. And uh, so she was never friendly. She would, uh, when we were married, she would call them downstairs. And I, I did always what he could help, he did. But then she would call and then she would say, Fee! And then Art would, would be on the top, and he says, yeah, Mom, uh, I want to uh, I wanna talk to Fee. And then she would say, uh, will you ask Art if he will go downstairs and get some firewood for the, for the, for the, fire, for the stove? She wouldn't talk to him like that. I had to talk. It was, it was a crazy, uh, yeah. And we couldn't get through that. She didn't. She, she was mentally kind of... Off of a rocker, mm -hmm. so uh, it was not easy. But then all the time you and, and I felt so guilty because I was so happy upstairs there, and when I was coming down, it was always kind of a. And I tried to do everything. I did her hair, and I made hats, and I made this, and I made the dresses, and uh, well, it was it was a sour time. But mm -hmm. still. So, and then we, the first of the things what we did when we were a little settled, two weeks we were married, we went to the, the American consul and we got the papers to be emigrating to America. Oh, really? So I thought that that was all motivated by my mom's asthma. No. But you were wanting to come to the States before. Yeah. Oh, oh, I thought oh, that, yeah. it was, that it was my mom's asthma that drove you to California. Your mom and dad? My mom's asthma. Her yeah, well, that, that comes later, that comes later. But we, you were already wanting to go to the... Yeah, yeah we, okay. we, we were on the list to go to America because uh, Art's father was in America. Right. And uh, we got in contact with him, and he was our sponsor, he was supposed to be our sponsor, uh, he was our sponsor on the papers, that he, he would do that for right. us. So when we were on the, on, on, the, on the list, it still took three years, and then Art was by the police, and then his father uh, had an accident that he, uh, we got that message, that his leg had to be amputated uh, because he got a box on it and it was a blood clot and whatever, and so he, his leg was amputated. And then Art was not feeling safe anymore. He said, well, I have to go to see my father and see how he is. So he took from the police, he uh, got ear, ear full. His papers were high enough that every, whenever he was wanted to come back, he could come back into the police. But he wanted to go and sail up and down and be in contact with his father to get that nest for us. Mm -hmm. And I was pregnant in 1950. 
August. Yeah, they said, well, 19, 1949. And uh, that was the time in 1950 that he started to sail up and down. But he was there. No, he was still at the police when Cora was born. That was after that. Sorry, I'm a little bit That's mixed fine. up at the moment. So, um, when, when Cora was born, that, that was the most wonderful time that we, where we went to. And everything was going to be for a boy, because that's what we said, we're going to have a boy. Didn't know what, in that time, didn't know anything. So, but I made everything we made in blue. The crib and the thing and the whatever, blue, because it was a boy. So, and then on August the 23rd, uh, in the morning, I said, well, I don't, or the night before, I said, I don't know, I, I think the baby is coming now. And he was so nervous because he was, by the time that I was on the last few weeks, of the, all his hair was falling out. <laughs> In the morning I could, could just put it up and then I have a handful of hair. <laughs> so he was, he was so nervous about the whole thing. So, and, 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 the, and then when it was the 22nd and I said, well, this is it. This is it. The baby is going to be born. And if we were work, uh, living about two miles away from where the hospital was. And, and he wanted to have me in a hospital because my mother had six miscarriages before I, I was born. And uh, he wanted to have that safely. So, And then from the police was the insurance that you could go to the Catholic hospital. On a, it was an old hospital on the, on the road where we were living, uh, maybe 100 years old. But it was Osborne, so. And we were, it was Catholic. And we walked two miles to go to the hospital. And you're, you're about to give birth. And I'm about to be. No, well, I, I thought it was supposed to be. So, and when we came there, and it was all dark, and there was a big, big cross, and then Jesus was hanging on that cross, and a blue light that was shining on Jesus, and it was so eerie, and we were going in there, and we did, and there was nobody. And we were standing there, and there is a big nun comes out of the dark, she says, what are you doing here at 4 o'clock in the morning? What are you doing here? She said, well, uh, I think the baby is coming. Uh, the, she says, and she looked at me, she says, not today. She says, but just uh, now you're here anyhow, why don't you go with me? And then, <laughs> and then I, I, I was going with her in a dark hall, and I looked back, and then Arthur standing under that cross with the, Jesus and the blue light, and the blue light was shining on him. And I thought, oh, I hope I see him back. <laughs> and then I have a child. <laughs> so I'm following the nurse, and I come into a room, and there are 28 beds in that room. But on the end of the bed is a little crib where the babies were in. So it was like you were stepping into something where all the crowd, the, 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 the um, now, what is a kick force? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, where, where all the babies were crying, uh -huh. so it was a noise. It was a noise in there, and then everybody was in the beds at four o'clock, and they were already washing and doing, and, and and because it was the time to wake up, and then I got the bed, and that was close to the door, and I see, and then the nurse comes, she says, okay, and there's yourself. Here's a shirt. Put that shirt on and go in bed, and I I did, and I was laying there, and then all those it was going to be a little quiet, and then very slowly the door opens up. And Art's coming around the corner, and he says, do you like it here? I said, I don't know. He says, if you don't like it, come out. I said, what are we going to do? Our baby in the, in the hall? <laughs> you know? Well, I don't know what to do. He said, well, just go. <laughs> so, and then the doctor came, and he says, well, uh, just go and uh, put on some clothes and go start walking. You have to walk the whole day until the baby is coming. And that's what we did. We walked through the halls and we walked through the, the step up, step down. And I was dead tired. And then around 11 o'clock at night or 10 o'clock, it started to really going. And uh, then they put me on the, on, the, on the wagon and I was going downstairs. And that was in the cellar where they delivered the babies. And then there is, a, and I'm laying on the bed and it was a dark, dark sprung for where I was in. And they had a bluish light there also there. And then there is a little nurse who is, and then your stomach is picking out. And she came just on the on the side from my, 
En ze zei, are you from the Erksland? Ik zei, wel. Ze zei, the name van het geloof? Uh, that's from the Erksland. Ik zei, ja, dat is. Ik zei, ja. Ze zei, oh, well, then you will be back again for next year. Ik zei, no. <laughs> Because... The, all those mothers who were there, they were coming all ten days, you had to lay down in bed. You couldn't go walk, move up, you couldn't go to the toilet. You had to lay ten days in bed. And, and Well, okay, and then the baby, after a little while, and my mother was sitting upstairs at that time, my mother-in-law and then Art, and they were sitting upstairs in the waiting room. And by the time that Cora came and they cut me open, I was giving the highest yell of scream, and then... I said, that's faith, you know, that's the, and, and then my mother said, yeah, that's what she is. And that's how they could hear that the baby was born. And then when the baby was born, she was so beautiful. Oh, and then almost when the baby was there, and the doctor says, I can see the head. They said, does it have black curly hair or red? Red curly hair. Because my mother was reddish, and I was hoping it was really red hair. So, and he says, it doesn't have any hair at all, it's a bald, bald baby. So and that's how the bald baby came into the world, and and then mother said right away, she says, oh, it is a beeltje. It is like a statue, a little, little, cute statue, and that's what she was called, beeltje, koratje. Oh, and it was an amazing experience for me because I never had a baby in my arms. Yeah. I was an only child, and I was kind of scared of it, and so I, I gave the baby to daddy, and I said, you hold it. And so he was holding her, and then we came home. And we had the boxer there. And he says, what are we doing with the dog? I said, well, I don't know. This is your, this is your part of the program. You do it. And then when we came upstairs, mother was sitting in the living room. And my mother was sitting downstairs in, the, in their her apartment. And, and he says, hi, Caesar, Caesar, come on. And he puts the baby on the floor. And those mothers were just sitting there and let it to kill him. You know? So... And then the, whole, the doctor gave her a few legs and was happy and I was, his tail was going up and down. Well, he, the baby is okay. We will, we will have the, the baby and the dog. And that's what we did. Um, <laughs> but the only thing was that when she was in the crib, she could be stand, sleeping in our little room where we had. But when she was growing bigger and she had to go into a baby bed, a bigger bed, we were going to sleep in the living room what we had because that, otherwise we couldn't stay, stay in there. So it was a time of, when you look back on it, it was a wonderful time. It was, everything was, we loved each other and the baby was doing fine and everything was okay. And then he was started to sail, going up and down to see his father. But it was not a pleasant time because then you felt lonely. And uh, most of the time when he was going, By that time, Cora was already a year, um, one and a half years old. She could walk. And then I would pick her up, and we were going in the train to Hook from Holland, where the, we would see the boats passing by again and then say goodbye. That was 22 days to see him back and come and come back again. Then it was two days, three days in New York with his father, and he always came back with good uh, news. Lots of clothes for us. We were dressed, oh my gosh, so beautiful. Everything was from Macy. In New York, what he brought back, I had the most exquisite kind of clothes, and it was all fitting me. And then I say, how do you know my size? He says, well, I just look around and I see somebody who looks like you, and I ask, what is your size? He <laughs> said, only the size. Yeah, okay. And this is so, such a beautiful story because I am working now here with my senior citizens in Corona for the last 20 years, and there is a lady there. She, She was, at that time, she was 72, 73, now she is 90, 97 already. And then when she was talking, she says, I'm coming from New York, and I work for me at Macy's. I say, you work at Macy's in New York? He said, oh my gosh, I got so much clothes from New York and uh, uh, from Macy's. Uh, in what area did you work? She says, ladies' clothes. I said, oh my gosh. And, and, and children's clothes uh, also. She says, well, I was the chef in of the, I was the, uh, what is it, higher, higher level manager. Uh, manager of that area. I said, oh, did you ever get a guy who spoke with a Dutch accent and who was, had black curly hair? She says, yeah. He was always so cute. That must have been daddy. You know, that's what we both, we both decided that it was him. 
because she met him later on here also. But that story never came up as maybe two months ago that we were talking about it, that she said she worked at Macy's. So, you know? so... Uh, I, I hope you can follow me. Yeah, so I was, again, I, I'm learning all kinds of things that I had wrong in my mind because I thought Opa had only seen his father that one time when somebody called him by his father's name in the bar. Oh. And then he went to the Siemens home and met his dad. Yeah. And I thought that that was the one encounter that he had with him. But he oh, came back over no. and over again. No, he saw him. Uh, and, and then his father was with the shopping deal also involved, you know, because he wanted to... And I looked forward to it so much to meet this man because uh, that he left and he was working to, to get a family together there. And by the time that he was settled in 1923, he, yeah, I was born 21. So when he was 1924, he left. And then mother was coming later on. And he was there, and then about it took him about four years to set it up that he was sure enough that he could have his family. But in that time, mother met Father Lindemann, and he was a very charming man. And she had ten brothers and sisters here, and she would go through a life that she didn't know what was going to happen. So when Art met his father the first time, he took out his wallet out of his suit. They were wearing those Colbert's in those times. Men were not going around like they're dressed now. And he sh took his wallet out and he says, I'm always carrying you on my heart all those years because I was hoping you and your father would come here and here is your picture that was in the wallet. So how this man had suffered all those years. Yeah. And then he sees his son who was 17 years old who was coming and standing I don't know who, because by the time that Art was standing there with his men, but said, why don't you go with me, and they said, you can, you can meet your father. He didn't know how the men, who the men was, right. and he didn't know where he was going, but he did. And then when he is coming to the door, there is Bengaloo on the door, and then he realizes that he is standing in front of his father's house, and then he opens the door, and there comes his father, who says, I always carry you on my heart. How that man must have suffered. Yeah. That that my mo his mother didn't, but she never told the truth. She always said that that he abandoned them. Yeah, yeah. But that is not true. That's not true. So that's so, to make the story softer. So Father Vangeloof had said, "Come, come to America. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready for it." Yeah. And and then she had said no. As, no, she said no because she was somehow a little bit more in love with Father Lindemans, and she wanted to marry him, and then she married him after she said to that I'm not going to America. So, but that was when Art was maybe uh, six or seven years old at that time. So that was something split and that Art was going to America when he was 17. The New Amsterdam, that is the picture what mm -hmm. is hanging in my yeah. house, yeah. Uh, was just built and uh, that was the first maiden voyage that was going to America. And then he, because he always said, when I'm grown up, I will go to America and I will find my father. So, and then he went to the Holland America line. He got hired there and he was working in the, in the downstairs in the uh, uh, dry cleaning and, and washing and things. The dry cleaning didn't exist at that time yet. But that's how he was working downstairs. And then the, after 11 days, they came into America. And he was as seasick as a dog when he was crossing over. And that's how he came to the, his father's house right. and met his father. And then his father says, who brought you here? He says, well, this man what was here with me, well, who was here with me? And then there is no man. How is that possible? Oh, the guy just left? No. But, well, in my book, it is an angel. Oh, wow. Uh, huh. Who brought him down there? Because he had so many things in his life, how he escaped from the Nazis. There was, he, he, had to, he got a bicycle, he was going on a bicycle upstairs the hill and it was raining, raining so hard. And he was soaking wet. And on the other side is coming a man on a bicycle with a cape around him. And he comes straight to him and he says, hey, you have your bicycle, uh, it's popped, isn't it? You cannot go any farther. And there's nobody around because it is still wartime. And he says, I will help you to finish this tire. Uh, well, I will help you to do that. 
And when he was doing that, he says, and take my cape, take my cape around you so you will be dry. Is that normal? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Is that another angel who was yeah. popping up? And we have so many things in life that we say, how come this is all so easy the way it is going? Yeah. And there is a lot of, God's love is around yeah. us all the time. Yeah. Yeah. But we didn't realize it because yeah. it was more time it was more and later on and now i have time to think about it yeah it is it is a wonderful experience to do that yeah. because there are so many things in our lives that did you say how is it possible to that you came through it and then you have to go no 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 dinner's ready so oh dinner is yeah, ready yeah. oh so let's pause. okay i hope i told enough oh yeah